And he needs to stay there and wait for me to get on, see? He can't be walking away. If he's walking away, we're going to do something different about it. So he's got to let me do whatever I've got to do to get my foot that high. And sometimes it ain't very pretty. You just got to waller around here and see him, see him look around. And then I'm, I'm going to get in here closer. Now when I get up close enough, then I'm going to grab that mane and I've got the pommel of the saddle and my elbows on the saddle. So now everything in me says come straight up. He walked off. I don't want him walking off. So I'm going to reestablish that before I put my foot in that stirrup. Now I can put my foot in that stirrup and he tried to walk off again. So I just help him there. And every time since I've been on his back, every time he's felt me in his mouth, if he moved his feet back, he got me to quit pulling in his mouth. He had a little higher than I like for it to be, so let's do some things here and see about getting some, some sort of communication to his face, just like I was doing up on his, with the drive line. And I'm, I've set my hands back here by the saddle horn, or the saddle, and I'm using my left le or my right leg right now, and it's just my right leg is just bump, bump, bump on his rib. And what I'm, what I'm wanting to get done here with that bump in motion is to take his right hind leg and have it go up towards his left front. Okay? Now, if I've got both bridle reins at the same time coming back to his right, right hip, both bridle reins coming back to his right hip, and at the same time I'm bumping him with my right leg, he's going to take his shoulders and set them slightly to the, to the left to get that, get that relief in his mouth. Okay, I've got to reestablish re here. So I'm going to just sit here and wait. Basically, I've got my hand set on the saddle, and I'm, and I'm bumping right here. So I'm, I'm creating communication to this horse's hip to come up into what I call a soft feel. And I'm moving that bit across his tongue just a little bit, Liberace fingers. And I've, I've got what I also refer to as the John Wayne posture. My, my shoulders are directly over my hips. So I'm sitting straight up in the saddle, and I'm basically walking on a, a uh, symmetrical circle, and I'm looking at that circle out there, and when this horse is on that circle, and he has put his body in the position that I want him to be in, right there, right there, going in too much, not not responding to my right leg. He's wanting to turn, waiting for him to find it there. Now he stepped up, forward. Basically what I want him to do is come up and around my inside leg, my right leg, until this horse establishes the right side of his body to be soft. I want him to connect his hip to his face And he stay soft in his jaw. Stay soft in his jaw. If he raises his head up and holds his back, he runs into my hands. If he tucks his nose and goes forward in that soft feel, he's in complete release. Like that. And my right foot is the only foot that I'm using right now. Unless he would go way off to the left. And I want him to just, just come around there and get soft. I'm gonna, I'm going to come back across this, the center of the pen <clears throat> and have him go straight. Now here's the first time my left leg has become involved. I quit using my right leg and I, and I started using my left leg and I kept the brow reins the same. And now I'm going to square, <clears throat> square my body up to look forward. Now both feet are involved. See his head come up. He got pushing on my hands. I'll move that bit across his tongue, get it down in there. And now he's moving his hip to the right a little bit more than I want him to. So I'm gonna just bump with my left foot here right here to get him to pick his shoulder straight up and get his shoulder out towards the fence a little bit and bring his hip 
more square behind him. It's wanting to swing instead of stay where it needs to be. There we go. And each time that horse softens up and quits pulling on my hands, he's getting quieter. Not that he's tremendously upset, but, but these are tools that I think you would benefit in, in putting on this horse where you can ride him. And by that I mean, if you try to take his friend out with him and, and go out on a trail ride and you, you want to go one way and, he, and your friend wants to go the other way, you can't ride him there because he's just too worried about being with the other horse. But in an environment like this where he's not worried about that other horse, now establish these tools so that you've got communication ability with this horse so that when you do get out, you can, you can take a hold of him on a short rein, not a tight rein, but a short rein. You see, just because my brow reins are short doesn't mean I'm pulling in his mouth all the time. He's only feeling a pull in that bit when he raises his head up. He's getting complete release when he comes down. So here, I'm gonna look over my left shoulder and come back. Now I've switched legs. I've quit using my left one. I'll use my right one now. He should move his left front like that and come right straight through. Now he's still shaped up a little bit like a banana to the left here. I'm gonna change direction. So I wanna take his shoulder and his rib and push it off to the, to the right or to, to his left and have him look around there to the right and come on through. So I'm establishing some body control. I'm gonna do it directly away from me this time. I'm gonna change direction. So now he's, he's shaped up this way. So I need to get him shaped up this way in order to turn. So I'm, I'm getting his, his shoulder and his rib cage out of his own way so he can come through. All the while I'm thinking about that soft feel in his mouth. Let's get a little bit of a trot going here so we've got a little more rhythm. He, now that the speed's picked up, his head's coming up a little bit more, so we'll just stay here with him until he finds out he can stay soft down in there. I'm gonna change direction again. Lost my forward. Change his body shape. Look around there. You'll notice that my eyesight is connected to my upper body. And push it on my hands, let him soften up here, and look to the right and change direction. Now I'm using my left leg to change his body, he's pushing on my hands, now he's back right. <laughs> I'm trying to be like a, a sports announcer here and call it play by play, because every step matters, and every body position matters. And if I, if I can't recognize what I need to do, if I don't know exactly what I need him to do, I'm gonna have a hard time communicating to him what I want. So what, what I want is when I'm going left, I want him shaped up like a banana going left with his body just out around that corner. When I decide I'm gonna change directions, I wanna get him going straight, change his body position so it's shaped up to go around this way. So by going from right to left, we're establishing shoulder control, neck control, rib cage control, and hip control simply by walking circles and being mindful of, of uh, his body position. And I keep my hands moving just a little bit so that, so that we get Good communication down to his feet and, and he keeps his nose tucked down in there like that. Let him step around here. Let him walk out. Every time I change direction, this horse wants to come up against my hands. So it's just giving me an opportunity We move his front feet, not his back feet, his front feet. I'm waiting on him here. He's going to take that left front foot and pick it up and set it there. 
He's going to take that left front foot and set it right down underneath my left foot. There. Right foot, left foot. Let him walk out of this and go somewhere. Let's set that left turn up again. It's it's real important, I think, when when a horse finds what you want, that we go somewhere. Get his feet moving forward. There's his release. He's getting a carrot right now. He's soft in my hands and, and I'm not pulling on his face. So let's set that turn up again. Go somewhere. Horses is starting to listen to me now and let me move his body. When he's in a good frame of mind and you're out trail riding and everything is good, you can pitch bridle rein out to their knees and they'll be happier. But when he gets up in trouble like this, we've got to have the ability to shorten up on that bridle rein, get a short rein, and get that nose coming back down and then establish communication to his feet down there like that. I would, I would say that something that might really help you is to, uh, to get a tie down to put on this horse. And when you go out riding, have a, and I like to use a tie down as a tool, not a, not a crutch. If the tie down is uh, real wide and the horse can get comfortable pushing on it, he'll just hollow out and push on it and that'll load all his weight up on his front feet. But if that tie down is, is a, a, a rope or a little string that's not comfortable for him to push up against, what it'll do is what my, it'll, the tie down will do what my hands are doing here. It'll, it'll get him to, to do that with his nose. And, and when he does that with his nose, then you've got a horse that will let you move his feet. If his, if his back is down, his nose is up, he's not thinking, he's, he's hollowed out and he, and he won't let you move his feet. Um, Sometimes it's beneficial for a horse that wants to get his nose way up in there to hold it up. You see, when, when I hold his nose up, you see where he went? He wants to go down. So the old, the old myth that high hands make a high-headed horse, in my opinion, is, is, doesn't work. It's, the fact is that when you, when you lift up on the range, you see where he... <laughs> but he's feeling pretty good right now. So I think it's your turn to come in. Why don't we, why don't we start off with having you move him around just a little bit with, with that flag. Okay. And uh, I'll get that for you. Oh yeah, breathing is real important. Because in, in their world, um, if the lead horse isn't breathing, they're in trouble. Just, I don't know how you undid my rein there, and he bridled himself up there. <laughs> okay, let's do that. So breathing will, will help keep a horse kind of calm because when the lead horse quits breathing, they're, they're just thinking about getting ready to run for their life. So when the, whenever the excitement takes place and he's got his head up and trying to get away from you, over-exaggerate your breathing. Okay. To purposely do that and let, let your mind go there. And it'll relax you and also relax him. So okay. why don't we come out here to the middle okay. and just send him around the pin all the way around to the left. Okay. So, so you're... you're forward motion button is right okay. there where your leg would be, okay. see? Okay? Yeah. 
So we'll just walk up in there. Don't get back here. See the forward motion buttons right here. Okay. And he left us. So, so go ahead. Now you now you got permission to whack him there. Now quit. Okay. Now walk there with him a little bit. Raise the flag up. There you go. Quit. See the minute his feet move, you've got to quit. So point that flag up there. Now quit. Watch watch the whole horse and. And see how you're behind his shoulder here, yeah. right? And you feel yourself wanting to lean to the right? Yeah. See, if I let go of you, you go up there. So you stay behind him and drive him right there. Now you're going to raise that flag up toward the... Now, when you want to stop him, then we can go from there to over here. Okay. And we get stopped. Okay. Now, if you want to come back this way, we've got to open this gate up. Okay. Come off over here. Now just raise that flag up and send him, send him off that way. Stop right there. Now point that flag towards his shoulder okay. and now move it up and down a little bit and walk up in there. Now, there you go. Now we're going to drive him again. We don't want him to turn until okay. he's thinking about turning right. See that? So step over there now and get up in his face and make him turn back to the left. Okay, you just established that you're not going to just let him do whatever he wants to do. Mm -hmm. You decided and you made a decision there to, to, for him to do what you wanted. Don't get ahead of him. See your point? point. There you go. Now you're behind him. Okay. Now I know this is real slowed down and, and when he's in one of those modes, yeah. it isn't going to be like this, but I bet you that's a different way of carrying himself than he, you're used to seeing him carrying. Yeah. Then he normally have his head up and his nose out. Yeah. And this this posture that he's in right now is going to be one of agreement with you. So back up and let him stop right there. There you go. Very good. All right. Well, you want to get on him? Sure. And that, <laughs> but that posture is is really going to help establish that communication that you need. Okay, there you go. Get a hold of reins and main. Just step, there you go. Good job. Stirrups all right? Yeah. Okay, so there you go, just like that. Get a reins a little bit shorter and, and get a little more distance between your hands. You keep a hold of both of them together okay. and just spread them out like that. See, that shortens okay. the reins up and then we're still a little bit long on this side, so slide this hand, slide this hand down. There you go, like that, and, and maybe a little bit on the other side. A little bit closer. Yeah, just like that. But then hold those. Yeah, keep hold of that. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Now, set up straight. And get your shoulders right over your hips. Scoot up in the saddle just a little bit. Now use your calf, your leg, about right there. Turn your toes out a little bit, and bump on him with both feet. Get him going forward. There you go. Now, when you feel that softness, mm -hmm. that's a different feel for you, isn't it? it is. Now, don't look at him. Your, your husband drive here today or did you? Did, did your, your husband drive here today or did you? My husband. He did? Well, it's a good thing he was driving because if you drive like you ride, you would have wrecked before you got out of the... <laughs> because you're, you're looking at his ears. That's like looking at the hood of your truck when you're driving. Look, look out where you're going. Set up, look, there you go. And look, pick your eyesight up. Now, move your upper body back a little bit. Now use your feet a little bit. Now use your feet. Now step on the gas. Feel him pulling on your hands just a little bit. Yeah. Add delivery out your fingers. Take contact, kick on him a little bit with your, so get him going up into that soft feel. Feel that, feel him come off of it. Keep kicking, keep riding, keep riding. If we just use fingers and we don't have engagement behind here, we're just bringing the face back to the body. Okay. And that'll just load the horse up on his front feet and it's of no use to you. Okay. But if you've got his body coming up to his face, that's collection. And that will pick his back up, pick his shoulders up, and give you communication to his feet. 
If we, if we just load him up on his front feet and stand him up there on that, you're going to have a hard time moving him. Okay? Look all the way over your right shoulder and just turn right. Pull back to that. There you go. Now, did you feel yourself when you made that turn lean in? Okay. Right, don't lean in. Stay, stay on the outside. Load your outside hip up, seat bone. Stay on the outside, and that, that takes all the weight off of the feet that you want him to move. So when you, when you turn to the right, make sure that you're loaded up on the left side of your body. That takes all the weight off of his left side, so then he can just step and go. Okay, just, just go forward. Okay. Just keep going forward. Now, we're going to think about turning right. Okay. So look right first. Let okay. your shoulders come back. Let your right shoulder come. There you go. Now put your weight in your left seat bone. Okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. Now then use your left leg a little bit if you need to. And then that's going to just allow him to come through. So now you're going straight. So square up and get equal weight in both seat bones. Now look left. Now load up on your right seat bone. There you go. Bump on him. Bump on him. Okay. It, it's kind of like driving in the mountains. Sometimes when you go around a cor corner and uh, you're going uphill, you've got to add more gas because you're turning. When you're turning, if you'll do more with your seat and legs to get his feet moving, you're going to be able to do a lot less with your hands. Okay. okay. So pick your eyesight up again. Look back here at me. Look your, let your left shoulder move back. There you go, see him already coming. All you did was move your body. <laughs> now look straight. Now look right. Sit on that left seat bone, kick him. Pull on him, pull on him. Don't let him go left, don't let him go left. It's your, you're driving here, not him. If you're, if you're driving your car and you want to turn this way and that car's still going this way, you're gonna get busy and coming back because it should scare you. If, if I tell a horse to turn left and he's still going right, I get a little bit bothered because I feel like I'm losing control. But if I do that and he, he comes back under me, then, okay. then we can breathe again, okay? okay? Yeah. Look where you're going. Don't look at him. Come alive with your legs. Put a little more forward motion. See if you can bring him up to a trot. Okay. Feel that horse getting soft as he's going trot. When you get more forward motion, he gets in a lot better position. Look out where you're going. And look back over your left shoulder. And just turn back left, keep trotting. I think that's good. We're probably going to have to vaminose the scene here.